Hello, welcome to this interview. Uh, I'm Rosorad from Radicad, and here we have Justina. Yes, hello. From Microsoft uh, Fabric team. Yes, yeah. uh, focusing on data engineering, data science, and AI. So really excited to be here, Rosorad. Thank you for being yeah, with us. Uh, yeah, I remember from the days that you joined the Power BI team first, and with a lot of initiative on the AI functionalities on the Power BI. Now focusing on data engineering and data science, the whole experience on that. Uh, so tell us about your experience from when actually the fabric started. What do you feel about it? Yeah, no, I mean, it's been a really exciting journey. So I joined uh, over uh, to the Synapse team uh, just over two and a half years ago. That's so right. kind of really when we were starting to think about fabric, the very, very early beginnings, and, you know, it's been a really, I think, just exciting journey going from the envisioning where Fabric was just, you know, on a slide deck, you know, we're kind of trying to piece everything together That's to right. going and implementing it, rolling out the private preview, public preview, and then finally the GA, you know, at Ignite last year. Um, so, you know, just have an amazing team. I'm really fortunate with all the, you know, amazing people, talented people I work with. Uh, and, you know, working closely with the customers, the MVPs, the whole community to right, get yeah. that feedback. And I think now it's really exciting because now that we are in GA, we're getting more and more of that feedback. And so being able to react and adjust our roadmap based on all the input that we're getting versus, you know, when we were kind of just envisioning things, it was much harder to, to be able to have those direct connections. Correct. So, you know, that, that's been just really, really exciting and super, that, super right. happy with where we are right now. Right, yeah. Uh, so, so obviously everyone loves Fabric these days. It's like everyone I talk with, customers, that's MVPs, great. everyone. <laughs> uh, but when you've been working with it before it's actually become available, what was your feeling about it? Did you feel that this is going to be something really um, important in people's life or like it was a risky move it, it was definitely a risky move anyway but yeah. yeah yeah so i mean it was definitely a big change from you know we're mm. uh in a, in a big big uh thing to kind of introduce to the market so there was definitely you know some risk involved i think aspirationally you know that was our obviously our aim to make sure that it was going to be well received and there was going to be a lot of momentum and excitement i think you know part of the strategy and thinking was because we were kind of building it really closely and tightly coupled with Power BI. Mm -hmm. You know, we have a great Power BI community. We have, you know, great MVPs in the community. So really kind of bringing those worlds closer together was something that we saw as an opportunity to uh, really build on top of a lot of the, you know, existing momentum. So that was like a big bet we made. But obviously there was a lot of new experiences that were being introduced across all of our data warehousing to real time to data engineering. We didn't want to overwhelm the experiences as well. So I think, you know, there was definitely big risks we took, big innovations we made with things like, let's say, one leg and all that kind of single right, format yeah. of data copying and uh, of, of data formats. Um, so I think, you know, now that we're seeing the reactions and the momentum, it's, uh, you know, we have so much more still in store that we want to roll out. Um, but yeah, definitely like, you know, building something for like, year and a half without releasing it is, is you know it's 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 nerve-wracking uh, <laughs> to make sure right, that we yeah. get it right <laughs> yeah yeah and, and i can say you are probably the only vendor at the moment having this like fully satisfied experience yeah which yeah, is which is quite a good good place to be uh, awesome thank you so uh so um about data engineering ex experience and workload in fabric what what are the new things people should be looking at what are the like uh interesting features, interesting yeah. additions now. Yeah, so we're, we made a lot of very, you know, cool, and I, I think they're pretty cool <laughs> announcements, at least, uh, you know, at the Fabric conference. So right. kind of to just talk about a couple of highlights, and there's a couple of things that are rolling out in uh, preview and GA, and there's a couple of things we also showed that were a bit sneak peeks of, you know, things that are coming in the future. Great. So like, if we talk about some of the things that are immediately available, we uh, released our new Fabric runtime. So we have runtime 1.0 three out which includes spark 3.5 and delta 3 which were you know highly anticipated by the community so they can start testing out some of these uh latest delta features we're making a bit of an interesting bet with with the runtime and, and with how we're going to be approaching the runtime releases going forward uh you know one of the pieces of feedback we got is hey we want to get our hands on the early bits of Spark of Delta, as soon as as soon as they're out in you mm. know open source, That's right. and um, you know our runtimes, there's a lot of components we built in. Uh, it's not just the vanilla open source uh, Spark or Delta. You know we integrated with our ecosystem. We make sure it works well with the Lakehouse. It works well with all our connectors.
directors yeah, of data it's science. Your own version of it, yeah. Exactly, which takes time. Um, but right. then, you know, the more we build into it, the more, you know, longer it takes. That's right. So what we're releasing with actually 1.3 is an experimental runtime. It's bare bones. It right. literally just has like integration with Spark and Lakehouse and very the core data engineering components. And we're going to be iterating over it quickly. So as we release some new integration, we'll update it and roll it out. So at the beginning, not everything is going to work. But this way, at least we hope we can get the earliest bits in an accelerated fashion to our users so they can start testing it out and then over time kind of getting it into that more uh, mature state until it finally gets to GA. Correct. So we're going to test it out. Give us your feedback, whether you like this approach uh, and, and let us know. Uh, and if, you know, if this is something that resonates, mm. we would love to kind of keep doing that with all the new releases that we, uh, that we basically roll out in the future. Great. That, that's amazing. And what is the best channel for people to give, give you feedback? Ideas website? Yeah, ideas website or, you know, I don't mind if you can contact me, like tag me in on Twitter or things like LinkedIn. LinkedIn Twitter, yeah. Or, idea. Uh, or, you know, or ideas or, you know, the community. Uh, so, you know, I will, I, I kind of look out for that feedback. I can connect you with the PMs directly if there's something Correct. we want to kind of do a deeper dive into. Just getting that feedback is just super helpful for us to be able to prioritize things and, and make tweaks along the way. You know, if you tell us, hey, this is, you know, too bare bones, I can't even get through a basic scenario, maybe next time we'll go and make it more complete. Or, you know, if you tell us, hey, this is great, like I love getting, you know, mm. those sort of early bits, we'll be like, okay, we need to keep doing more of that, right? So it just helps us kind of course correct based on the learnings that we get from the community. Right, that, that's, that's cool. Uh, in terms of like the, um, uh, let's say, the, the, the whole data engineering experience. Um, so we have um, a lot of people who are already in data engineering space yeah. and a lot of people who are looking at it in their career path. Uh, what is your advice to, to the people? They want to get into the data engineering space. There are lots of different languages, lots of different tools. Um, what do you tell mm -hmm. them to do? Yeah, uh, and you know, I think that's one of the great things about Fabric is we provide you lots of different paths to be able to complete similar things in the end. But depending on your starting point, your skill set, where you're coming in, you know, are you coming in more from a Power BI perspective or maybe more of a data science perspective. So I think the easiest and simplest way to get started is we have some what we call like lake house happy paths, data engineering happy paths, where you can That's go and fine. complete a tutorial end to end. And it's, you know, you can start from something really simple where you build out a lake house, you get your data into the lake house, and then you can build Power BI uh, reports directly on top. And with uh, data engineering, you can start from more like the low code experiences. Like mm -hmm. if this is your first interaction with it, I would recommend doing something like data flows and landing the data into your lake house. The lake house is a pretty low code experience anyway, so it shouldn't be something that is intimidating um, for, for users. You know, it gives you a UI based ex experience for being able to uh, explore and manage all of that data that's in the lake. But it, it should be pretty accessible. You can even do things as simple as just upload your files from your local computer, uh, you know, just, just literally a file upload, and you can right click on them and say, hey, can convert it to a delta table. So to go and go from like a raw CSV to a delta table in the lake house is, is really simple. You don't need to write any code. Um, and then because Power BI's uh, semantic models are directly integrated into the lake house, it's as simple as just creating a new report on top of it to basically complete your end to end flow of. ETL all the way to a report. And once you're comfortable with that flow, you can start to venture slowly into things like notebooks to do a bit of your data transformations, for example. And so with notebooks, I would probably recommend getting started with PySpark. That's more of kind mm -hmm. of that Python-like experience, uh, which is a little bit more versatile. It's an easy path to get into things like data science as well. Um, at the Fabric Conference, we also have given a little bit of a sneak peek of what's coming in the future with just pure Python notebooks. So soon you won't even need to leverage Spark if you're maybe not working with huge data or maybe you know you are still kind of easing your way into it. Uh, Python notebooks will be a really great starting point once we have that uh, to just you know get started from some really simple simple workflows with with a code first experience. And finally, I'd say that even with within the notebooks, we have some a great tooling called uh, Data Wrangler, for example, which lets you do things Correct. in a low-code yes. way directly inside the notebook. So you can actually, on top of your data frame, creating a data frame is really easy. You can just drag and drop your table into the notebook cell. It creates you mm -hmm. the actual code, so you don't even need to know how to read the data. You can just drag and drop it in. 
and then you can just open it up in a data wrangler and then you can use a very similar you know if you're if you're used to power query very similar experience to do local transformations everything gets actually translated into code so if you want to learn along the way and be like oh, okay i just filtered some data how would i actually write the code you get the code um, and the newest releases actually gives you options to do either pandas or pyspark right. so you can okay. use uh, either Spark or you can use kind of just pure Python with it. Uh, and that's also just a great way to get started with notebooks. We also introduce things like code snippets, mm. uh, co-pilot integration, obviously. That's right. So there's yeah. a lot of they're easy, helpful. you know, ways that ease you into the notebook journey as well. Yeah, yeah. And I, and I liked that you mentioned that Data Wrangler is a good place to like learn about it. I mean, it, it's, a, it's a good tool, but uh, a lot of people still compare it with something like Power Query Editor. It's like yeah. for a different purpose. Exactly. Uh, and it gives you the Python code, which Power Query Editor doesn't. So, so it, is, it is a great thing. And, and the co pilot, of course, like yes. it help, all <laughs> helps you to, to learn this. Uh, one, um, one question I get from a lot of people uh, when they work with data engineering, data science, everything actually across Fabric is that uh, they are not sure how their computes are utilized. Mm -hmm. Um, now you don't have to, let's say, mention any dates or anything like that. I just want to know, do you have something like this in your pipeline that you give, let's say, more uh, detailed monitoring of how the compute uh, is actually used, how the capacity units are used, let's say, for example, throughout the data engineering experience, something like that? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so uh, generally we have our com capacity metrics kind of reporting yes, app, right. which gives you kind of that breakdown of, you know, your resource utilization across the different, you know, uh, resources. That's right, yeah. And within, um, within Spark monitoring itself, we're building quite extensive monitoring capabilities, more for the developer persona, Correct. right? So yes, we've yeah. recently rolled out some, let's say, analysis of like the executor usage mm -hmm. uh, within Spark. We've, uh, we've announced at Fabric Conference this uh, being able to actually monitor reoccurring runs to see how much data is being processed and uh, how long the jobs are running on a kind of reoccurring schedule. But in terms of like more fine grade fine-grained capacity reporting. Mm. Um, I am not entirely sure of mm. if there's anything more planned on that roadmap because that's more on the platform team side. Right. So the, some of the other... The administration team. Actually. Yeah, the admin team will know more in terms of that specific roadmap because I don't want to <laughs> say something that, <laughs> that you know, they, yeah. they'll be like, wait, wait, that's not actually <laughs> planned, right? No, so, that, that's right, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, totally makes sense. Yes. Yeah, and in, and in terms of uh, like one other thing that still mm. people have quite a lot of questions and it is kind of like pretty much explained in the documentation, things like that, but we'd like to mm -hmm. hear it from you. Like people are still thinking like, should I use Lake House? Should I use Warehouse? Like these are two different objects. Which one is better for me? Uh, what is your perspective on that? Yeah, and I, I get that question a lot as well. So I would say, um, you know, between Lake House and Warehouse, it really depends on which kind of toolkit you really are more familiar with and what you kind of mm. want to use for your day-to-day, -day, um, particularly the creation side of it. Because we'll, right. get, we'll get to the consumption. The consumption story is actually pretty uh, uniform uh, across. But for authoring, I would say, you know, if you're more of a Spark first, like notebooks, writing mm. Python code, working with maybe m more data types, like where you're transforming like your... I don't know, ORC you know, data or JSON data, you have streams kind of coming in an unstructured way and you want to use all of that data with notebooks, Correct. then the lake house architecture is uh, probably uh, more, m more relevant or more appropriate because uh, that's kind of the toolkit that you get with the lake house for authoring. That's right. Now, if you're coming more from a traditional SQL warehousing background, mm. um, then, and you kind of want to use, uh, you know, kind of your stored procedures and things like that in, in terms of your authoring, then the warehouse is probably the better starting point. Now, from a consumption pers perspective, both the lake house and the warehouse come pre-built with basically, well, obviously the warehouse has the SQL endpoint, but yeah. so does the lake house, right? That's right. And so you can go into the serving side, you can go and set up, let's say your SQL security, you can create your SQL views in the both, in, in, in basically the same way across across both of them. Um, and so ultimately from a consumption perspective, if you, if you want to do cross database querying, if you want to join your data across your lake houses and warehouses, it's the same experience. Same experience right? So yeah. from a consumption experience, we try and make sure that it's ultimately the same um, across both lake houses and warehouses. And there's lots of ways you can get the data 
you know, brought in or joined across both, whether you're doing a join across a view or you're using shortcuts. Yeah. Um, but ultimately, it comes down to how you want to do the authoring is really the ter determinant of whether you start with a lake house and a warehouse. Mm. But ultimately, it's very possible you have some of your data in a lake house, some of it in a warehouse, and ultimately you bring it together That's right. um, for that consumption story. It, so you know you don't have to you don't have to feel like if you started in one, you're locked only to that one. You can ultimately bring all your data together more upstream in the gold layer. Yeah, that's right. I think I think there is one of the happy paths that actually mm. have both of these elements in it as well. Yeah. Perfect. Awesome. Is there any last thing you want to tell to uh, our audience that I didn't ask for? Um, no, just again, I, I think I just want to reemphasize, we would love to hear your feedback. You know, there's a lot of exciting things that we've, we've got planned. So stay tuned, read the blogs in terms of what's, what's coming, what's coming up soon. And, you know, just thank you for, for watching and really appreciate uh, your time, Reza. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you for yeah. your time. Thank you for all great things you are doing with the fabric. Everyone is enjoying it. And um, if you want to get in touch with Justina, the LinkedIn, Twitter, I'll make sure that we'll put these links in the, <laughs> in the video. Uh, thank you. Yeah, thank you so much. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Bye.